Welcome to the Wilson Center Middle East Program's recently launched series titled Art in MENA, a medium for activism. My name is Brooke Sherman, and today I'm joined by Zaina El Said from Amman, Jordan. After nearly a decade of work between Europe, the United States, and Russia, Zaina returned to Jordan to pursue art as a career. Great to see you, Zaina. Thank you so much for having me, Brooke. Thanks. It's a pleasure to speak with you today. So I'd love to start by just learning a little bit more about your journey as an artist. So what inspired you to return to Jordan and pursue art? And then in addition to that, what are the major themes that are covered in your work? Okay, there's one too many questions. I'll try to answer them one by one. Uh, yeah, so I started, and the thing is my family, uh, a lot of members of my family were artists. Uh, both my uncles were well-known, renowned artists in the region. And um, I guess somewhere along the line, I, I picked up the, the artistic part of the family. And although I did not major in, um, in, in arts, uh, but I ended up following their footsteps. So when I started doing art, I really didn't know what I was, uh, what I was doing really. So I was experimenting with different medias. It was uh, initially I started doing calligraphy, painting and experimenting with different medias, wooden resin, um, plexiglass, etc up until I landed uh, onto collage art, uh, which is, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with collage art. It is basically you assemble a body of art um, into a single portrait made out of completely different images uh, collected from random uh, uh, sources, magazines, CD covers, um, anything you can think of basically. Uh, so you create um, a painting out of existing uh, work, existing stuff that, that already are, are available. Um, initially, I was doing um, handmade collage, which is literally cutting images uh, by hand, scissors, and assembling the work. And it gradually developed into, um, into digital uh, collage, which is exactly the same process, but it's done into uh, it's done on a computer program such as photoshop and after effects etc and this is what i use now i use photoshop um and this is has, has been going on for some time um i started the digital collage for over six seven years now and um Sorry, what was the question, the other questions? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, I know that's two big themes to cover, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the second question are, what are the major themes that you cover in your work? Right, yeah, uh, so in, in my work, I'm, I'm very fond of mythology and folk tales and especially pa pagan folk. So um, most of my work revolves around or, or, or is inspired by ancient ideas, uh, ancient stories, um, bygone concepts such as um, uh, reincarnation, um, metamorphosis, um, uh, where morphing actually, where humans can change from human shape to animals and vice versa. Um, so I, I apply these concepts into my artwork and a huge part of, uh, of my work is inspired by a Circassian mythology. Circassians are the indigenous uh, people who inhabit the North Caucasus region. It is between the Black and the Caspian Sea and they're, they're a very ancient nation and their history goes dates back to 7,000 BC. So they, they have extremely rich heritage folklore, um, very uh, rich sagas. They're called the Nard sagas. They can be regarded as uh, the equivalent of um, the Norse mythology to the Scandinavians, and they're as as um, as important as Greek uh, and Roman mythology. So this is mostly my inspiration. I I express um, the Circassian heritage through uh, through these stories and and through these myths. And when you sought to pursue career as a more formal um, profession, 
did you know kind of immediately that you wanted to um, go, you know, draw on mythology and your Circassian heritage or did it kind of evolve over time? I think it evolved over time. Um, with me personally, it, beca it began because the things that I really loved doing or, or I was uh, very uh, interested in, I always had uh, this um, intimidation. I couldn't really do the work that I was interested in. Um, fear, I don't know, it was like fear of not making it as it's supposed to be or as, as good as, it, uh, as good something as, as, as it should be in, in, in my thoughts. So uh, I had a bit of a struggle in the beginning up until I finally, I remember the first painting I ever did about uh, Circassian mythology. And I was like, oh, finally, I've done it. <laughs> and this is when it started taking, uh, taking off, I guess. Sure, I'm sure um, after kind of dreaming of doing that for however long it was, it was probably very yeah. gratifying, um, especially yeah. because, you know, it's the mythology is a very neat um, kind Definitely. of theme to cover yeah, to begin yeah, yeah. with, but also your own personal connection with what you're covering in your art. So to right. that note, I'm curious what you've learned about your heritage and whether, you know, about your family or just about Circassian community in general through your art? Well, I was always well informed. I was, I've always had the interest since I was very young. I've always had interest in, in the history and the ancient history. And um, I've done a huge research on the mythology prior to, to incorporating it with my artwork. Um, so I've already had the background, um, but it definitely enhanced um, the visual side of the, because with, with, uh, with an art myths, for example, you, you're just reading text. So when I started adding visuals to it, it kind of, you know, brought things to life uh, in a way to me. <laughs> so, I know you mentioned that your family, you have a lot of artists in the family, your uncle and um, several other members. But I know you also come from a family um, or several of your family members are in policy and the military. So I'm curious right. how you draw inspiration from kind of both sides of the family, if you will. And if you think that your upbringing with these um, various professions a part of your life have impacted your work. So for example, yeah, have you touched on any political themes or messaging in your art? Yeah, definitely, it has affected definitely, and I've mentioned it in a few interviews uh, previously, that the my my upbringing and the way I was brought up, it was like because there was a an, it was a military tribal atmosphere at home. Uh, my grandfather was a, a strict military man, but at the same time, you had this these all well, these artists, so there was sort of this uh, structure, a military structure, but kind of like. Uh, moving and swaying be between artists so it, it was a very eclectic atmosphere and I think my artwork followed a similar pattern where there's like a central character the main figure the authority figure and the like a uh, story is interwoven around this uh, this character um, well as for politics because both my my mother's and my father's family were both into politics and uh, but I, I try as much as I can to stay away from, from politics. <laughs> Although in some of them, some of my artworks, I try to, you know, like hint a message or something, but I, it doesn't really, I don't really relate to it much. So no, not really. Sure. Um, and, and with that, I'm, I'm curious what the reception to your work has been. So both within maybe within your family, you know, kind of thinking about on your own personal unit, how your family has um, impacted, you know, just very directly your work as a career and if what their reception is, but also the um, engagement with the Circassian community in Jordan and in the MENA region, you know, if, um, if you've been right, able yeah. to kind of connect with, with the community around you. Yeah, definitely. Well, my family has been, of course, always supportive. They're always supportive. And because a lot of members are, are into art, so I had a lot of uh, help and direction in, uh, in that manner. Uh, but when it comes to community as well, I think because my art is a little bit different 
um, it's very surreal. There's uh, a lot of mythical characters. So I think, I'm not too sure, it could be that it took time until they accepted the, um, the style uh, or, or the manner of what is collage art? Is collage art really an art? Is digital art? Because it's not the conventional painting or, you know, with a brush and, uh, and a canvas. So I think up until now, not a lot of people really accept it. Um, but I exhibited in at um, in, the, in the Caucasus, in the North Caucasus, several times. And I felt that there is uh, more appreciation, but they're more receptive towards the work. I'm not too sure, maybe it's the atmosphere or, um, or the general, um, they're more in tune and in touch with arts, let's say in, in Russia and in the Caucasus versus Jordan, for example, because in Jordan, we don't really have this uh, foundation for an art platform. It's, 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 it's a bit tough here. <laughs> sure, sure. And um, what in one of our previous interviews as part of the series, the, the artist kind of felt the same thing that the, the domestic um, environment was a little bit different than the international reception of, of his work. And part of it was because the art scene in the MENA region, while I, it's, it's vibrant, it's still young and um, not yeah. quite as developed yeah. as other parts of, of the world. It's not so, developed. It's lack of government support, I think it's mostly the government. There are individual, um, individual efforts, definitely. We had an, a few art fairs that um, was one this year and, and another one last year, and but it's all individual efforts. So we don't really get governmental efforts or governmental platforms that can support artists and, you know, take them out there, you know, and showcase them, you know. <laughs> Sure. And so in that respect, do you think there are certain challenges that artists in the MENA region face that are different than, say, you know, people in, in other underdeveloped sectors? Or would you say that a lot of your challenges that you share are, or the challenges are shared? I think the main challenge we, we face is we do not have... Um, local creativity we borrow our creativity from the west and we import our ideas we import our techniques we import everything from the west so there is no space for um how, how can i say this uh, in a nice way <laughs> so there isn't much room for um for indigenous creativity let's say or like what do you think? How would this happen? We're always borrowing things. So I think this is the biggest challenge we have at the moment uh, to create something that is completely organic, completely uh, natural or that that is um, inspired by the region itself. Although sure. there are, of course, amazing artists who are doing this, but I'm talking in, in general, this is a mm -hmm. major problem we have. And do you think the root cause of that is because the audience is more inspired by the Western forms or the artists themselves? It's media. I think it's more to do with social media. It's um, what's happening out there or what's happening there more than what can we find here. Um, it's something that, that I also suffer from as well because I always look for, you know, something to inspire me here. But, but I always, you know, open the net and try to find, you know, inspiration and in what's going on in this museum, what's going on in that museum. So it's about, we don't have um, the ed proper educate, proper knowledge about how to do things without depending on social media, um, imported ideas. We're always following. We're not setting the, <laughs> We're not setting standards. <laughs> right, right. And um, kind of to that respect, digging in a little bit more into what the artist community looks like in the MENA region. I know you've mentioned that um, due to the lack of support, there's a lot of individual efforts to um, 
to basically elevate and, and sell your work. So right. with that respect, what does the community of artists look like? What kind of issue areas bring you together or collaborative opportunities? Um, is there something that you would say, like, would you say that you're part of a community of artists in MENA or is the thinking still a little bit more individual? individualistic that, that's the main thing we don't have we need a committee like an artist committee to know who who are the jordanian artists this is the, the number one thing me and my friend were talking uh, the other day and he's also an artist and like we don't know each other you know we meet each other if it wasn't for this art fair that happened it was just a few weeks ago i'm like oh these jordanian artists i never knew who are these people so we don't have a committee that can gather all these artists together so we know who we are like did who are the digital artists who are the you know sculptures who are who 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 does what you know so i think we don't have although there is um the jordanian art committee something i'm, I'm not too sure what it's called but but it's um um it's, it's not very effective then uh, they're, they're yeah you know. <laughs> sure, sure. Again, um, maybe with more resources and um, support probably, probably, from, yeah. from the yeah. government that could that could help. Um, yeah. So shifting gears just slightly, um, I know you've mentioned that you don't cover kind of direct political messaging in your artwork, but one of your goals or inspiration is to create harmony and a sense of oneness through your pieces. And so right. I just want to learn a little bit more about that inspiration. I'm, I'm sure a lot of it comes from mythology and um, the perhaps the Circassian background, but if you definitely. could speak a little bit more about that in your work. Yeah, definitely. Well, basically, like mentioned, I um, I usually create harmony out of contrast. I find great joy when I assemble some assemble a painting, a body of artwork that has a, a completely eclectic narrative. But the whole point is to create to create a harmonious uh, visual narrative out of it. Um, and I think when once this is done, you can transcend all the differences because I usually like add like architecture from China, uh, some um, calligraphy from Persia, and you know, make, try to mix it all together. And, and once it's done, you can see, ah, oh, this, it, well, to me personally, you know, this, this really looks harmonious, this really looks complete. And when you think about it, that yeah, it, it, all these differences are from completely different origins and, and cultures, and you, they can actually, you know, coexist in the painting and uh, and in that sense you know and and in that thought you can actually think that yeah transcending differences and creating harmony out of all these differences is the goal really <laughs> sure and um i i'm very interested in the the digital collage you know i think i'm sure that that is um and if i, I think you know technology and art could be a very useful tool, you yeah. know, and, and really help you, you know, leveraging those that technology really helps you achieve that, you know, and, and again, I'm not going to get into the mechanics of how it works, but I'm sure, you know, being able to move around the pieces, especially if that's one of your goals is to take inspiration from all of these different, you know, exactly. themes and, and um, even, you know, geographies, and then be able to kind of envision it on one board um i'm sure it's been very useful and i'm sure you've learned a lot so um where you know you've touched on this a little bit but just getting back into that kind of technology aspect of it um how would you say that your techniques have have evolved over time um and kind of you know leveraging the technology aspect of it right yeah well i've been working on photoshop and after effects for about I don't know, eight years, something, yeah, around eight years. And I still think I know like a fraction of what technology is offering. It's like so, it's it's very fast paced and, and it's, you need to keep up. You need to like always keep up with what's going on. And um, there is so many things that technology now is providing it, but we need to, you know, catch up mentally. <laughs> 
<laughs> we need to you know grasp what's uh, what's 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 new how to how to you know the techniques and stuff so it's a rapid it's a rapid world it's a very rapid world and i think this is where digital art has um is becoming uh more popular because it's conveying this fast pace uh where everything has become so fast and likewise art is 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 uh is, is doing the same it's you know speeding up in in the digital art world sure and you had also mentioned that social media has had a big impact Definitely. on the themes that are covered um not Definitely. only by you but artists so i'm sure that plays a role into it as well Definitely, definitely, yeah, for sure. You press a button, and all the digital artists are right in front of you. You know, you're you just you look at like constant um, art the whole time. It's uh, it's amazing. It's really amazing how how things just changed in such a short span of time. <laughs> sure. Well, I'm sure in that sense, um, social media and technology is also helpful for kind of bridging the barriers that do exist sure. between sure, artists sure. in the region. Sure. For sure. Especially for a uh, Circassian community because, you know, Circassians mostly live in the diaspora. And up until the 1980s, way up, maybe early 1990s, there was hardly any communication because of communism. and. And since the internet and the social media started, we're connecting more. We're we're we know each other now. We're we're, in, we're being introduced to each other. So yeah, it's it's a blessing. That's wonderful. Um, so looking to wrap up, I'd love to know kind of what your key takeaways are. What have you learned as a you know as an individual as an artist? from your career and with that what do you hope that other artists in the region will um you know also learn from from their career and from other artists well i definitely definitely i always say that when you love what you do this is when you do best um as as long as you love and you're enjoying what you do is i think the the key factor for success uh so i've been enjoying what i'm doing so far i've been enjoying it every day and and i never get bored of it i hope i never get bored of it so yeah that's basically it really um practice 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 and enjoy it great is there anything that you're working on right now on well, a few things yeah i'm actually i was just working on on one horse i don't know how that's gonna turn out to be <laughs> still waiting <laughs> yeah Great. Well, looking forward to to seeing the final product. Well, thank you thank so much you. for your time. Thank today. you so much. It was such a pleasure. Thank you so it much. Was.